Shalom guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jonathan the Code Searcher. In this video, we're going to be talking about the eclipse, the election, and a Donald Trump table um, that I did years ago. The rabbis have worked on this very same one uh, that I used to call the first Trump election. Also played a role in the second one where he went the other way, right? He was right about both. We're going to be talking about that table because of the interesting things that happen in that, the very um, concerning anomalies that appear in his table and what it may have to do with um, this election and the eclipse. Same thing kind of happened in 2017. The election happened. There was an eclipse. This time now there's an eclipse and then there's an election. So um, it may be something to, to take a look at. And so we're going to look at that in this video. But first, I want to read an article from End Time Head, uh, excuse me, End Time Headlines. Ricky Scapiro wrote a really interesting article that I want to read about this eclipse and the alignment that's taking place. But then we're going to jump right into um, the Trump table and look at some some things that are there and some additional things that I found and that, that seem to be ominous, you guys. This is a very condensed table. It's in a very small area. This is something that myself and the rabbis have worked on. Um, if you recall this particular table, Rabbi Rips was the one who discovered um, the anomaly about the assassin, the name of the assassin. But um, I was probably the first one out there because I was on the Hagman and Hagman show talking about this table in 2015. And so, um, and it's the smallest skip. Uh, Donald Trump actually appears encoded many times, but this is the very smallest skip. And so any code searcher looking for this sequence of letters would have found the very same one. The rabbis did. Rips found the anomaly that we're going to talk about in this particular table. But then I found some additional things uh, about the eclipse, this comet that's going to be coming through, and um, some other things that I was trying to reconcile with this table. Uh, with the implication that there's a possibility that he might be, you know, unaligned, right? And I don't want to be morbid. It's not what this is about, but it, it's something that needs to be spoken about and considered. Um, consider the ramification of what's implied in this table. So um, let's first jump into um, End Time Headlines article. Very good article from Luis Caparo over at End Time Headlines on YouTube. Seven planets in our solar system will form a line as the path of the Great American Eclipse of 2024 crosses America. And of course, he's, he cites, this is an opinion, but the Great American Eclipse in 2024 is truly going to be a once-in-a-lifetime event. A few years ago, I wrote about this eclipse as it will pass over seven locations named Nineveh. As it moves across our country, since I wrote that article, I have also learned that the eclipse will go over a location in Texas named Jonah. That's pretty incredible. But what I have to share with you today is even more amazing. Last week, I shared both. Uh, I shared something that Rachel Baxter has discovered with my core subscribers. Uh, I wanted to get their feedback before I shared it with the general public. Like me, many of them were absolutely blown away by this discovery. This information is so explosive, and I feel that it's important to try to get it out to as many people as possible before the eclipse arises, arrives. So I can't hold back uh, any longer. Today, I'm going to share with the whole world what I shared with my core subscribers last week. Since the Great American Eclipse of 2017, we have been waiting on the Great American Eclipse of 2024, and now it's less than two months away. On April 8th, the Great American Eclipse of 2024 will complete the giant X over America, and that, and that uh, uh, Great American Eclipse of 2017 started. Amazingly, on that exact day, the seven other planets in our solar system will line up in the sky this is an extremely rare event and it's and it will never be seen again i don't know about that we'll probably have to look at stellarium to see 
Um, but I think you may have a point with the, the alignment that do play a role. The, uh, the Maseroff is uh, by design something used by the father to communicate with us, right? So why am I so concerned about what's going on in the heavens? In Luke 21 and 25, Yeshua specifically told us that we should go watch for signs of the sun and the moon and the stars just prior to his return. And what I have to share with you today is absolutely amazing. During the month of April, so many things are going to happen in the heavens. Let me start with the things that are commonly known. On April 4th, just four days before the Great American Eclipse of 2024, there will be a planetary alignment that will involve four planets. The next planetary alignment takes place on April 4th, 2024. It will feature four planets, Venus, Neptune, Saturn, and Mars. The planets will align in the morning sky. Venus, Saturn, and Mars will be visible to the naked eye, but you will need a telescope or high-powered binoculars to see Neptune. Half of the planets in our solar system will be aligned on that day, and it's pretty remarkable. In addition, there will be four planetary conjunctions during the month of April. On April 3rd, we will witness the conjunction of Venus and Neptune. And by the way, um, if, if you don't have a telescope and you don't have binoculars and stuff, you can download an app on your phone. Um, there are several of uh, the stars. One that I use is the Sky Tonight. Uh, it's a free app, and, and you put it on your phone. You can point it to wherever you're looking and even zoom in on the stars that you can see, maybe even faintly with the human eye, but with your phone, you can definitely see it. You can zoom in, you can click on it, you can see what it is, you can see where the planets are. There's a lot of information there. You can also see each of, of the zodiac signs uh, if you use one of the layers there. A very, um, a very useful tool if you, if you have an interest in the stars. Half the planets of, in our solar system will be aligned on that day, and that is pretty remarkable. And in, in addition, there will be four, four planetary conjunctions during the May, month of April, on April 3rd, we will wit witness a conjunction of Venus and Neptune. On April 3rd at 1053 GMT, Venus at a magnitude of 3.8 will pass 17 degrees of Neptune at its magnitude of 8.0 in the constellation of Pisces. <coughs> Venus is visible with the naked eye, but Neptune requires a telescope, binoculars, and good magnification. From the northern hemisphere, the conjunction will be difficult to see because of the planets will be so close to the eastern horizon in the morning. Uh, from the southern hemisphere, the event will be slightly easier to see as the planets will be higher above the eastern horizon. On April 10th, we will witness a conjunction of Mars and Saturn. On April 10th at 10, uh, excuse me, 1846 GMT, which is 246 2 p.m. Eastern time, Mars will be a 1.2 magnification and will pass 24 degrees from Saturn at a magnitude of 1.1 in the constellation of Aquarius. Both planets will be visible to the naked eye. Observers in the southern hemisphere will be able to see the planets above the eastern horizon in the morning. The northern hemisphere, uh, in the norm northern hemisphere, the view will be poor as the planets will be closer to the eastern horizon just before sunrise on april 20th we will witness the conjunction of jupiter and uranus on april 20th at 7 30 gmt or 3 30 a.m eastern time jupiter at a magnitude of negative 2.0 and uranus a magnitude of 5.8 will meet in the constellation aries at a distance between the planets will be only 31 degrees Observe the planets in the evening low above the western horizon just after sunset. This conjunction will be better seen from the northern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere, Jupiter and Uranus, will be very low. Don't forget to bring binoculars to see Uranus. This planet is too faint for the naked eye, especially from light polluted cities. On April 29th, we will witness the conjunction of Mars and Neptune. On April 29th at 4.01 GMT, 12.01 AM Eastern Time, Mars at a magnitude of 1.1 will pass extremely close to Neptune at a, magnet, magnet, uh, at a magnification of um, 7.9 in the constellation Pisces. 
the apparent distance between the planets will be only um, two feet, 14 inches. And the distance between, I don't know, understand what that is. And the distance between Jupiter and Saturn during the great conjunction of 2022 was greater than 6.1. The conjunction of Mars and Neptune will, will be much less spectacular. However, because Neptune is so is too faint to the visible uh, naked eye or the naked eye, a pair of binoculars or telescope and look for the duo in the east in the morning. Observers in the southern hemisphere will have a better view. But everything that I have just shared with you pales in comparison to the discovery that has been made on, by Rachel Baxter. In addition to our planet, there are seven other recognized planets in our solar system. In, Jan, uh, in our solar system, in January, all seven of those planets, along with the sun, moon, and stars—excuse me, sun and the moon—begin to line up in the sky. This is different from the planetary alignment. During the planetary alignment, uh, several planets appear to be stacked behind one another as it looks from uh, from the Earth. But in this case, the other planets in our solar system are actually forming straight in a, in a line in the sky. This is how Rachel explained it in an email that she sent to me. Beginning on January 24th, the alignment of the seven planets begin to take shape and will continue through uh, mid-May opposite of the earth when looking from Jerusalem to the east which I believe is the way Yah keeps time in its planets all seven recognized planets will line up in three constellations Pisces, Aries, and Taurus they will look to be in a line not uh, what people commonly think as a planetary alignment uh, where their planets appear disappeared into one bright one that's another perspective though, but it, they're both alignments on April 8th, the sun, moon, and other planets in our solar system will appear to form a straight line in the sky uh, when you're looking out from Jerusalem toward the east. The following is from a graphic, yada, 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 and I think he shows a graphic here. Let's see. Of course, you can go over to the site and read more um, of this article. I want to now, you know, segue over to the the code that I'm looking at because, you know, what are the significant events that are coming up? We can see the, the possibility of, you know, world war taking place. Uh, but what is, what are these signs particularly mean for America? What, what upcoming events are coming that may play a role? Well, the elections, right? So I started looking at different tables, Biden's, um, Kamala's, um, Donald Trump's again, and that's what I want to focus on today because of what it, you know, implies in this table. And then I may give some commentary on, you know, what I think may, you know, hold for us in the election. Um, so let's jump right into that. Let me just share my screen. Over actually. On this computer. Here's a table. Then we're going to look at, this is the Donald Trump table, very famous, been around for a while. Um, and this is what we have in here. Um, D Trump or Donald Trump running up where it's in to be uh, in the blue here. Um, this was found um, several years ago, probably late 2014, early 2015, I talked about this table all through 2015. Donald Trump was not even a nominee when I did the um, uh, Hagman and Hagman show, and they asked me who was going to be president. It looked to me like him, uh, the word appointed or appointed time right up under his name, also with the word Nazi president, very close proximity and in his table. Um, this is also the very same one that the rabbis worked and this anomaly was found, which is, it basically says Shem, uh, or the name of the assassin right next to him, right? So this implies there's gonna be an assassin of some sort, right? Or he, that his life is in danger. 
Um, and so this is why this, this table has been talked about so much about the, with the rabbis. I've talked about it several times. Um, there's a lot of information in here, but this is this is quite skilled back for the sake of a presentation. Um, let, and so let's get into some of the ELS code that's here. And by the way, as you as you notice, probably already, this is all exclusively ELS code. This is what we have found encoded in the text. I have no scriptures highlighted. Um, and the reason for that is because I can't e exactly explain why his name appears in this particular place. And what we see here, this is the book of Exodus, and this goes into the book of Leviticus. We're right in, in the law, right? And I don't understand that. This is not in the prophets. This is not in the writings in any other place, but right in the Torah here, where there's a lot of sacrifice um, most of these verses that run right through here is about the temple rituals with the priests and the sacrificing of animals, spilling of blood. There's a lot of bloodshed in here, a lot of sacrifice. What is that all about? That doesn't make any sense to me why his name is encoded in a place all about sacrifice. All right. But here you go. Um, some of the terms here like uh, that might be relevant indictments. Indictments here in the yellow, and then it's here on itself, sharing a shin twice, right there in this little cluster. Uh, then, of course, it's here in the in the yellow that's vertical. Uh, I know there's there's also another one that runs through here, but for the sake of that, it's kind of confusing. Uh, I didn't show that one, but there's actually four indictments here um, in this table. The name Biden is here in the orange. So is the name Obama. Look at this, Obama running right here, starting with this olive and the Vav, the Bet, the Mem, and the Hay running across at a skip of 491. But not only that, Kamala's name is here, running down this way and sharing the olive of Obama, sharing a letter. The only time Kamala and Obama appear in this table, they share an olive right here with indictments, um, the darkness, by the way, this vertical term running through here is the darkness. It's also up here at the top, the darkness, um, right where, um, the eclipse is right here with those four letters. The eclipse is also down here with these four letters. I also have a comet, the comet. Remember there's a, there's a comet, um, with this second Eclipse, so I, I would look at this as the first eclipse and this and the second, and they both run in opposite directions. Look at that. This one runs from from right to left, and this one from left to right down here. And this one has a comet that's that's involved with it. Um, I did find I, I couldn't find the words uh, second term, but I did find the word again. Um, in close proximity with president, like uh, right here, you see these three letters is again, and we have the word president. Right under Donald's name, running in the other direction with the mem, noon, yod, noon, um, that word means a quorum or a legislator, legislation, right? Quorum. Uh, I thought that was interesting that the president is blocked by the quorum or the legislators. Interesting how that works out. We also have the year Tav Shin Pei Hei in the same line as Nasi. So if anything indicates that he has, you know, a probability of being president and you guys, I think the cards are stacked against him. They're doing everything they can to, to keep this from happening. And, and if this happens right here, What's indicated here? It's because all else failed in preventing this, the presidency. You you understand what I'm saying? So I started looking for methods of his demise, possibly. What, what about poison? There's a poison in here. It's very loosely associated, so it's probably not likely. Um, the word stabbed in the orange here, stabbed. Still kind of loosely associated with this. It's close. And I think if anybody who is considering 
and, and those that are, that are considering um, evil toward him, they have considered every possible, everything, poison, stabbing, shooting, bombs, all those things, right? But what stands out? This right here. Okay, so we have the word shot. That's vertical. So that's concerning because it's in the same skip as the name, right? And also what, what's indicated in the yellow. But it's also here at a skip. because So the skip would be 460. That's the vertical. This one right here, same word, 461. But also has he is a connect. Uh, connected to it in in the red letter and the white and red letter under that he is shot so this is highly probable v most likely if anything happens to him he's going to be shot and quite possibly twice as you see there um i'm not making any predictions you guys that's not what this is all about i am uh, an analyst interpreting data that i'm finding encoded so I reserve the right to be wrong. Let, let, let's not forget that, okay? Uh, I'm not making any predictions here. I, and matter of fact, I hope nothing happens to the man. I don't think he's wicked, but I don't think he's righteous either, you guys. I think he, he's a decent man, um, but I don't think that he is the Messiah. And that word is here, the Mashiach. And I, I think that has a lot to do with the rabbis and some of the Christians, that have used that word he's a savior right and if you recall because they did this i predicted in the last election that he would not be president because what the christians were doing uh exalting him to this level here but not only them but also the rabbis which is really interesting to me because this other anomaly right next to his name let's say something bad happens to him Look what happens with the rabbis. Not one rabbi came. Not one rabbi came to what? To a funeral? To an event where he's killed in the tent of meeting, like right here in the word murder, vertical, tent of meeting. That's an official, um, this is an official gathering right here with the word murder, right? And also this, this right here that crosses with the name of the assassin, this concerns me. The Kodesh Kodeshim, you guys know what that is in Hebrew? This is the Holy of Holies. And what this word um, says to me is, this is inner circle. This is somebody who has gotten very close to the president. The Holy of Holies is like getting into the Oval Office. You understand what I'm saying? It's the Holy of Holies. Not everybody goes there, but this person does. This person, look how close this is to his name. And if you recall in the Yixok Rabin assassination table, uh, essentially this, this, this anomaly here appears lateral across the name Yixok Rabin. And of course, he was assassinated one year later. What does it mean when it's next to the name? I'm I'm going to... I'm going to put myself out there a little bit and say there's a high probability, especially if they can't stop him with the courts, you guys, because what I see in this election, which is unlike the last election, is I see a juggernaut. I see a juggernaut. There are people that are tired of this guy right here, Biden. They're tired of it. And so we have a juggernaut. And they don't have this anymore. He cannot re be reelected, you guys. And so the, the left has a conundrum. Kamala, I think, has a short window of time that she is going to be president, but that is not who they're going to have running. There's nobody who is going to beat this juggernaut, not even Gavin Newsom. So they have to they have to scrape the bottom of the barrel and do something really dirty to avert this second. This, this second term that we, we see that is possible here. Okay. They have to do something. They're going to use every method necessary to try to stop that. Even this, this right here. Right. The use of an assassin. 
I think this is a last resort. And I think if he does get in the office, this is even high. The, the probability of this happening is exponential at that point. It's high now because they do not want this to happen. Nasi president again in 2024. Right, they don't want to see that again. And by, by the way, we do have the the United States connecting with the bet and the comet, the, the devil comet that everyone's talking about, is assigned to the United States with the bet. What's the bet represent? The house, the home. But look right above that. You have the voice. It's speaking to the home. United States, the comet, voice speaking to the bet. The home. Also look for the question, who will kill? Right here in the green, who will kill? And I, I will make this prediction. If this event does happen, it's probably going to have, the name is probably going to have a connection with this, this term here in some way. Sharing a letter, crossing it in some way, yada, yada, yada. You know how it goes. Right. So a lot of concern for this. Uh, and we also have another um, a vertical anomaly here. I almost forgot that. Metzhim. Metzhim, which means identifiers. I don't exactly know what that means. I just it's it's a vertical anomaly in very close proximity to all of this stuff going on. Right. Identifiers. Not one rabbi came. The name of the assassin in the Holy of Holies, connected to the name Kamala, which is also connected to the name Obama. And by the way, that's his girl. Obama was the one that highly recommended her as a vice president for Biden. And maybe that's the plan all along. Maybe they knew that Biden wasn't going to make two terms. And, and this would be the first woman and also, the first black woman to be president. Just putting myself out there on a limb. Not saying that's what's going to happen. Uh, again, this is all about interpreting this data. I am not a prophet. But I am an analyst in this. I've been doing this long enough to be able to say I'm an expert at it. Um, they say if you got 10,000 hours in anything, that's an expert. Right? Well, I've, I've got a... I've got a little bit over that, so um, I'm just putting it out there. That That's what I think I'm seeing here. And we didn't even go into the plain text. We didn't even look at all the sacrifice and all the bloodshed and oblations and all those kind of things. And I, again, I don't understand why Donald's name is in this place anyway. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, it's, it's atypical of what we usually see with the person's code. Um, however, his name is encoded. Uh, I think it's 260 something times in the whole Bible. And this is the shortest skip. This is the very smallest one. And, and you know, the methodology says that the smallest skip is the most, uh, the most significant. Okay. So you guys, um, that's what I got for you on this. Worked on this a few days, had to pull it out. It's one of the ones I told you I've been working on uh, during this hiatus. And, uh, Seems like it has a significant to the election that we're going to see and also the next eclipse. Um, both are here. Comets here. Um, Biden, Kamala, Trump, Obama, they're all here in one table. Um, what does it mean? I guess we'll see. Um, you know, these are all always best understood in hindsight. It's very dangerous to try to use this as a as a crystal ball to make predictions. It's okay to give your analysis, but be very clear when you do that. Don't come across as, you know, God told you this and God told you that and acting like a, a prophet. Um, that's not what this is. Uh, this is more in, in the line of the ephod, which will be a function of the high priest, right? So that's where I'm going to leave it, you guys. Listen, I appreciate your support. I appreciate the new subscribers. Almost 2,000 since, since we started back um, 
doing this. I appreciate you guys. Uh, I appreciate everyone that is uh, signing up for class. If you're interested in searching codes, we have a course. We're, we're teaching this program. Um, matter of fact, I've been working on this this class this weekend, and um, has you know I'm really happy that I've actually solved a software problem that we had incurred early on in our our restart of this school, and I solved it. Or I I did it with the assistance of, of a friend of mine, um, but we fixed it. And, you know, good news is we're not going to have to spend money on software, you guys. So students will be gifted all of the software that we're going to be using in this class. Um, so that's good news. If you're interested in this course, you want to learn a little bit of biblical Hebrew, learn how to search codes, email me. Um, you'll see the, the email down in the description. If you're interested in a personal code, I'm also starting back on doing those. Um and we'll be called up very soon and started on the new one. So if you're interested in that, it's a new flat rate that we're going to instead of open donation. If you want to get one done, $100, um, and we'll get you a code. If you want to go deeper, we'll we'll discuss that a little further. Um, and, and, you know, you can adjust your donation. So until the next video, you guys, shalom to you. May you will bless you. Don't be discouraged. These signs are not to be feared. We're supposed to understand what's going on, you guys. Things are going to get better. Shalom to you. Yahuwah loves you. We'll see you in the next video.